Okay, we're back in live in San Francisco. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com and SiliconAngle.tv, and we're here talking about services angle, a disruption in the services business, and we're on the ground getting all the action here at the, the big EMC launch, and I'm here with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with Wendy Barr, who is the Senior Vice President of Cisco's channel business, the global channels uh, uh, operation. Uh, so, Wendy, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, you glad you, to be here. First time on, it's good, welcome. <laughs> you work with uh, SIs, service providers, you know, and of course all the partners. This is a big partner themed event uh, today, so you know, how do you feel? It's great, it's great to be here, and it's always great to have an opportunity to talk about Cisco's partners and the channel, such a crucial, crucial element to our success. So it's been a couple years now um, since UCS has been launched. Um, yes. Very bold strategy, you know, at the time, uh, people scratched their head, you know, I was one of them, said, hmm, Cisco and servers, I'm not sure that makes sense, but um, uh, we, we seen an impact, you know, clearly. Um, give us an update. Well, Cisco's all about innovation, as you know. It's in the heart of the DNA of our company, and we see this as an architectural evolution, just like we saw with IP telephony. Uh, we saw that in the data center with the UCS product, and the architectural evolution in the data center um, has been astounding, and Cisco has led the way. We've catapulted to success that we, frankly, didn't think we were going to have in the early days. Our customers love the performance. They love how fast the applications run on UCS. They love the reliability, and they love, frankly, the cost performance. So can you update us on, uh, from a channel perspective, t thinking about UCS, is, is, what's the mix like? Is it more sort of traditional Cisco loyalists, if you will, in the channel that are saying, hey, great opportunity for us to now tip of the spear, pushing VMware, um, or is it a, more of a mix of people saying, hey, I like this new model. I'm sort of disaffected with the old stovepipe model. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, we're really fortunate with Cisco to have such a world-class channel. It's so robust, uh, over 50,000 partners globally, over 12,000 that are certified, meaning they've truly invested in enabling themselves on Cisco technology and capability. So when we first entered the space, clearly many of our partners had previously been in the data center space with the old architecture. And what we were amazed to see is how quickly and robustly they embraced the new architecture with UCS, many of them becoming data center specialized and certified, and uh, we're excited excited to keep enabling them with more incentives, more training, more opportunities. So we were really fortunate to have so many partners who are already embedded in the space, taking advantage of the new architectures and truly being sort of the champions of Cisco with UCS. What are, the, um, what are some of the learnings that you've come up with, particularly in the, in the, with working with the channel in the last couple of years? Well, you know, things you'd do over if you had to do it again, and you know, maybe mistakes that you made, uh, successes that surprised you. Talk about that a little bit. Well, the success is always around how willing the channel is to embrace the new technology. And they really do have an appetite, and they are very much counting on us, giving them direction and guidance about target addressable market opportunity. So that's been really encouraging. Some of the challenges is as we move more into these converged architectures, these converged infrastructures, the multiple manufacturer go-to-market is a challenge. So simplifying that go-to-market for our partners when they're dealing with multiple manufacturers is a real key issue for Cisco, one that we're listening to our partners and we're taking to heart, because the more we can make it easier for them from a co-branding, marketing, joint deal registration, incentive programs, the faster we can close business, and that's what it's all about. So, so I've noticed, I'm an observer of this market, I noticed suppliers are getting very aggressive <laughs> with, I've called it a land grab, with, uh, with the whole converged infrastructure. And, Generally speaking, the pricing's very good. I mean, the, the premium that you're paying for integration is not that much or sometimes nothing relative to rolling your own. Um, but still, customers that I talk to say, I know, but I don't trust that. I'm afraid that that's gonna come back to me and haunt me with, with pricing power. What are you seeing in the channel with regard to that discussion? Well, I think one of the reasons that our Cisco validated designs have been so rough uh, so robustly embraced by both the partner community and frankly by the customers is we are de-risking the solution. We are taking out some of that uh, skepticism, if you will, and what we're allowing our partners to do is take their very highly trained, highly paid resources and invest that work in other aspects of the customer's business, whether it's the consulting, uh, providing relevancy on vertical applications or services, which is a huge part of their profitability equation. So I have a couple of questions for you, and obviously, um, I love the channel business. I used to work in it with HP back in the day, but you know, whenever you have these disruptive inflection points, we're seeing one now with converged infrastructure, and obviously data, cloud, mobile, and social, as we cover on SiliconANGLE and Wikibon. The old, some old guys die and some old guys evolve. You mentioned some of the things you guys are listening to your customers. What are you seeing as the key trends right now for those key success points for 
um, a Cisco to evolve to the new architecture, um, where there's new requirements. I mean, we have an infrastructure that's converging. They're looking for proven hardened solutions. Uh, integrators need to make a lot of cash, and that's all about gross profit. That's about services, making it easier. But with applications now becoming so rapidly deployed and people outsourcing more as a common practice, what simplicity things can you point to about this new architecture? And, and where will people succeed and where will people fail in your mind? So we've had an opportunity uh, in my global team to take a look at what's happening around the world in combining the strengths of, say, a traditional service provider, an asset-heavy partner, with an asset light, more consultative partner like an Accenture as an example. And we were talking about cloud earlier in the vSpec launch, and I think that the opportunity for clouds to come more quickly, particularly hybrid and public clouds, exists when we combine the strengths of multiple partner types. It is difficult. It, it, you know, this is complex business. So asking a traditional service provider to do everything end to end in a new hybrid or public cloud environment, um, they could certainly do that. It might take them longer. So we've seen a, a big up tip an appetite of partners to work more collaboratively together. Um, you know, we have some opportunities with uh, Telstra, a service provider in Australia, also working with uh, a company by the name of Keen, which was acquired by Dimension Data. Very prevalent in the SAP space, and they're making great headway. Accenture, of course, has a very large SAP practice, and working very closely with other more traditional uh, networking partners, we've seen some great success there. So those are some of the early trends that we're seeing, and uh, it's being, it's beginning to pay off. So it's just a follow on there. Cisco obviously been great with their channel, you know, depending on who you talk to, but you know, it's infrastructure, right? And you're providing solutions for the uh, integrators and ultimately the customers, which have a huge Cisco footprint going way back down to the old router days. But now that the application market's evolving so rapidly, um, how does Cisco adapt? I mean, because now all the gear has to work with the apps and we're seeing that separation between hardened infrastructure and then you know, versatility with you know, mobile, for example. If people want instant dashboards, they want instant data. So how, does, how are you guys evolving and addressing that particular piece? Well, Cisco, I've been at Cisco almost 12 years and we currently are on quite an evolution you know, from hardware to more of a converged or software stack. And I mean, that's evident through our acquisition of WebEx and Ironport and ScanSafe, just to name a few. We also offer a hosted collaboration solution, which is more or a cloud or a software as a service type offering. I, I think the opportunity really though is to benchmark the performance of key applications on a UCS platform, like SAP HANA for example, or Oracle. We've had seven world class benchmarks with Oracle and their software. Getting our partners up to speed to be better able to migrate those applications and size them is a critical next step in Cisco's evolution. Yeah, I mean, we were at the SAP launch this week. Um, Richal Sika was going over showing on the HANA and the database, the mobile. It seems to be that the partners are becoming much more app developer oriented. Yeah. Are you seeing that same trend? We're seeing some, not all, but we are seeing some. The early adopters do get the um, sort of added lift of having both the hardware expertise as well as the software expertise, and clearly we're looking at orchestration and automation as well. Cisco works well with BMC, with CA, and of course our own intelligent automation service. Uh, one more question, I know Dave wants to jump in. Uh, what, is, what is the market opportunity you're seeing around the, the services on top of, say, the EMC launch that you guys are involved in? What can a, a partner look at and say, wow, this is a gold mine there. That's a big mountain we can climb and, and make a lot of profit on, in terms of either services and or, or partnering. Well, for a long time, Cisco's been a big fan of helping customers uh, take advantage of partners' professional services. For us, key to success, loyalty, and longevity of our partners in the channel is their ability to evolve very robust professional services practices. Again, I think the opportunity to take these solutions, like a vSpecs, and provide more opportunity for quicker time to market and free up customer or partner resources to do more of that consulting is a great profitability opportunity for them. And, and now you work with, interestingly, cloud service providers as well as the channel. And we had a number of channel partners up on stage today talking about the cloud. Obviously the customers are asking about the cloud and they're embracing the cloud. At the same time, the cloud is this threat to the channel. If everybody's going to buy to a cloud service provider that you work with as well, um, what happens to the channel? Well, one of the areas is services. What are you seeing in the channel with regard to the whole cloud trend and, and how is the channel adapting? Well, last year at our Global Partner Summit, we launched Cisco's Cloud Partner Program, and that was sort of our first step in the evolution to help our partners make this journey to the cloud. We recently launched Cloudverse, which is sort of our concept around the cloud marketplace. Cloudverse is really 
uh, a philosophy around the world of many clouds. So we don't believe there'll be one cloud or a couple of clouds. There's clearly public and hybrid. There is a tremendous near-term opportunity, as we talked about today at the vSpecs launch, around private cloud. And even within private cloud, we see clouds in healthcare, clouds in finance, clouds in entertainment. So we tell our partners who've been at the heart of building strong, reliable networks, the platform for intelligent clouds, that their near-term opportunity is in private cloud building, and that's an element of our cloud partner program. We obviously have big service providers and other global systems integrators more interested in building out hybrid or public clouds, or perhaps a cloud for a vertical. So what we see is actually a wealth of opportunity rather than a restriction or a limitation on our partners. So you're saying that specialism in verticals is a, is a key near term for your partners? We think Know it their is. verticals and stay in there? Well, I, I don't know that they need to stay in there, but I think it's important that they invest in the specialization and the certain kinds of taxonomy and knowledge that you get in a vertical market. Partners are always looking for differentiation. How can I be different than the partner next door? And I think vertical expertise provides that opportunity. Well, in services, I've you know, shown this pie chart here. I don't know if you can see this, but so John, this is the converged infrastructure opportunity and shows the services piece of the pie, which is almost 50%. Services, however, it's a nice big number, but services are very fragmented by yes. nature, whether it's by vertical or maybe application area, geography, and so I presume you're, 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 you're seeing that, that channel partners have to pick their spots. Like you said, maybe not stay there permanently, but, right. but get a good strong foothold there. Yeah, it is, it is important. You're absolutely right that they try not to be all things to all customers because the landscape is so diverse and it is so competitive. Certainly in public sector, policy restrictions in certain countries or with certain government entities is a keen area of vertical expertise as well. So the thing is there's many, many opportunities. Partners need to pick what's most attractive from a target addressable market, hone their skills well, and work with us to make those realities happen. Are there any new new things that you see in the channel, and obviously you look at, you get a lot of customer listening going on, but you know, channel, the normal tactics, blocking and tackling, MDF co-op, price breaks here and there. What's new in this new world of, with social media, cloud, and rapid deployment? The old days of deployments, it's slow, zillion dollar deployments is, is shrinking. We hear that from SAP, they're shorter and, and faster. Um, does that change the mix of how you guys service your partners? Well, what we're hearing directly from partners, in fact, I heard from one of our, our best partners here today at this event, is that what they're seeing is an opportunity to expand the discussion. So they went into a peer network opportunity with the IT buyer, it was roughly about $300,000, and very quickly that expanded into a VXI, VDI opportunity. So it supersized, in their words, the opportunity to almost 1.4 million. Not only did it grow the size of the deal, it grew the, it grew the amount of professional services, back to our services discussion, increasing their margin and profitability, enhancing their relevance with the customer and embedding them more deeply in the account. So we're starting to see it move out of just an IT-centric discussion with sort of the uh, routing and switching yeah, yeah. to a much more complex discussion. We've seen this, we've had this on the Cube in the past about how, how this new market looks like client-server where you know one investment expands on a, from a billable dollar standpoint significantly because yeah. if you buy this, you get this, right? Kind of thing. Is <laughs> that what you're saying? Yes, absolutely. Storage, Wendy, has been an important partner of Cisco. There was a lot of rumors a couple of years ago, oh, Cisco's going to buy EMC, Cisco's going to buy NetApp, and you know, it was sort of fun and interesting, but um, Storage has been a very important uh, partner for you guys. I mean, you know, clearly EMC and NetApp both, you know, partnering with Cisco, you're all about choice, EMC's all about choice, you all want to sell your own stuff, but um, talk about that a little bit and the importance of Storage. Well, I mean, storage is a critical element of the solution, clearly, and it's going to be important as we move forward to hold to our principles of an open and non-proprietary ecosystem relationship. You know, we've said for a long time, Cisco is about satisfying and delighting our clients, providing opportunity for our partners, and innovating technologically. So we have to hold to those three key tenants. We also, at the same time, have to look for opportunities to expand the market. And uh, clearly, when we take a look at the converged infrastructure, there is an opportunity to do just that. Okay, well, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We appreciate Wendy Barr, the Senior Vice President of Channels and Partners with Cisco. Um, big giant in the business, big footprint, uh, a lot of business in the channel, so thanks for sharing your services angle with us. Appreciate happy, it. Happy to be here. Okay, we'll be right back with our next guest. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back.
Raymond. Flash memory is a hot topic these days in both the consumer and enterprise markets. And the prevalence of flash in the consumer world on our mobile phones, tablets, and laptops is beginning to drive. And finally, let's go out to Utah, where EMC's newest state-of-the-art global technical support center officially opened last month. The ceremony was attended by EMC president and COO for Computing Infrastructure and Cloud Services, Howard Elias, and Utah Governor Gary Herbert. The 25,000 square foot center will serve federal agencies and companies desiring U.S.-based services, as well as Central and South American companies requiring Spanish and Portuguese language support for their information technology needs. The facility has been operating since December and expects to employ about 500 people with high-tech and customer service skills from Utah's skilled IT workforce by the year 2015. Thank you so much for being here. I can't tell you how excited I am about today's events. It's, it's uh, you know, uh, a wonderful opportunity for us to celebrate uh, the opening of our newest technology support center. Maybe it's the pioneer spirit of Utah. You know, we know how to work hard and uh, put in an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. And our production is uh, really a very good from our labor force. We are, in fact, high-tech savvy. I'm Connor Lamalfa. I'm a level one uh, technical support engineer with the Clarion team. I, I like the satisfaction of helping someone, whether it be uh, fixing, fixing something, something that's broken or, um, you know, helping them solve an issue, which, which they're in trouble with. I enjoy helping the customer. By locating our newest customer support center here in Draper City, EMC is demonstrating not only our commitment to world-class customer support, but also to creating good jobs and strong career opportunities here in the United States, enabled by our growth worldwide. My name is Gavin Heenham, I'm a technical support manager currently managing the Symmetric Support Team here in Utah. You know, when they announced the Technical Support Center opening up in Utah, I immediately thought of the opportunities for both myself from a career perspective and also the opportunities for my family. I thought it'd be exciting for them and also to get involved at the very early stages of, it, of the start of the Technical Support Center. I thought it'd be really exciting. The skilled workforce and favorable business climate, along with Utah's location and linguistic capabilities, allow EMC to better support the unique requirements of our uh, customers of all stripes, from the U.S. federal government, our growing base of customers here in the U.S., throughout the Americas, and across the globe. My name is Emerson Senna. Uh, I work as a technical support engineer too here at MEC on a product called Clarion. As I'm a Brazilian, I speak Portuguese as my first language, and Utah is the main center for multilingual support. So I never thought I would have opportunity to speak Portuguese living in America and that has been great for me. EMC also intends to be an active participant in Utah's business community and to help provide students of all ages in Utah with valuable career skills that are in demand in today's high-tech economy. To this end, our academic alliance works with more than 750 colleges and universities worldwide including here in Utah, to prepare students for information technology-based professional roles that didn't even exist a few years ago. Roles such as a cloud architect and a data scientist. So I congratulate you all for the work that's being done, for the results you're, you're providing for us, for the future optimism that you bring. You are the example of that hope that we all have here 
and living the American dream, and we're doing it here in Utah.